Good afternoon. My name is Mike White. I'm with Vision 33, and I'm a solution consultant who will be showing you the V33 ship extension for SAP Business One. I'll be showing this on a 9.3 SAP Business One running on the HANA database. To uh, get things running, let's first take a one slide overview of what the V33 ship add-on can do for your business. The first thing is it has a real easy setup. One of the cool things about V33 ship is it can be set up, up and running literally in just, just a few hours and you're getting a return on investment on the product. So in the administration setup of V33 ship, this is where you can define additional shipping and handling fees and they could be on a per package basis, they could be on a, a total ship basis or a, a value of what's being shipped. So you have some options there in adding handling fees per shipment or per package. This is also where you can enable real-time address validation. We'll take a look at that, as well, of course, as user security, who, who can actually use this extension and who can't. The NV33 ship also adds some features inside of the business partner. The ability to perform address validation from within the business partner, the ability to define carrier and customer account numbers for those carriers when the customer pays for shipping. Then in the quote, order, and delivery, there's a new tab added. And what this allows you to do is set up things like cash on delivery, provide for shipping insurance, establish a declared value, generate the shipping labels. And then optionally, you can import that shipping detail back into those documents, but you don't have to. You can later use batch billing and generate freight invoices to your customers, and we'll take a look at that as well. Uh, you can, then you can view the shipping details from these documents and uh, with a hot link back to the shipping provider. When you turn a delivery into an AR invoice, if you imported those shipping costs back into the delivery or the order of the quote and it carries through the delivery, then they'll be on the AR invoice. There's no need to run batch billing. But it's not uncommon to rate shop, calculate the freight, generate the labels, ship products, but not necessarily bring those shipping costs back into the documents. That's when you would use the batch billing process. And so it's, it's very comparable to the document generation wizard. And we'll also take a look at that. The V33 ship extension is ideal and it works with UPS, FedEx, and the uh, USPS uh, services. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's take a look at the uh, V33 ship extension. So to get things going, we mentioned that we can start at a quote, we can turn the quote into an order, we can generate a shipping estimate at the quote level, that'll carry forward to an order, to a delivery and so forth. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll just go into a sales order and in here we're gonna select one of my customers here, Bed Bath & Beyond. We're now gonna uh, choose a couple of items that I've got in stock here, so we'll go ahead and select those. And um, we'll go ahead and put in a delivery date of today and um, you'll notice here on the v33 shipping tab this is where i can say nope this is cash on delivery or i could tie my customer's shipping account number here so the customer picks up the charges i could also ensure this shipment and then declare the value for this shipment as well so we'll go ahead and we'll add our sales order now that we've added our sales order we no longer have to do double data entry you see our sales order here is 498. So we're going to open up the, in this case here, we're going to use UPS World Ship for this demonstration. Again, we could be using FedEx or USPS equivalents. So we're going to start by simply going into the import area and we're going to bring data from B1 into UPS. The only thing we need to know is the order number, which was uh, 498. So we'll go ahead and do that. Once I bring that information in, I then select the type of shipment. This will be a standard. We'll say that the uh, the boxes or the box is a 12 by 12 by three inches high. It weighs two pounds. And now it's gonna calculate my shipping. I need a couple of other pieces of information. Um, what type of, uh, what's the general description of the goods. And then I also need a valid phone number. If I try to add this right now, it's not gonna work. So um, it's my mistake here for not, having a valid phone number in my 
business partner. And so let's go ahead and let's um, process the shipment. Now, because this is a demo, I don't actually have a Zebra printer connected to my uh, uh, network. And so I'm going to say, no, don't generate the label. But this is the point where it will generate the labels and then um, <clears throat> tie those labels back into the Business One solution. So now that we've done that, if we go back into our sales order here and we look at the V33 shipping tab, you'll see there's a couple of new buttons that have been added. The import shipment and the shipping details. Now the shipping details is really just going to show me um, the shipping information and then also give me a hot link so I can track this uh, for the customer. The import shipment is optional. If I choose to import shipment, then that means when this uh, the sales order is shipped, turned into a delivery, all of those freight charges will carry forward. So we'll, let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's go ahead and answer yes here. We'll bring in those shipping charges. It's done. And now you can see that uh, we have a total amount of the shipping and any handling fees. In this case here, we, we imported them into the, uh, the sales order. But again, you don't actually have to import those shipping charges into the sales order or delivery if you don't want to. And you'll see um, what I mean here in a few minutes. But regardless of whether we import it back in or not, we'll always have access to the shipping details and we'll always have the ability to click and then do the uh, uh, tracking uh, process. <clears throat> okay, so that's uh, putting a sales order in and generating the uh, FedEx or the UPS labels and bringing those shipping charges back in. Now, another example of this is, let's go through this again. Let's go ahead and, and let's uh, bring up our sales order we just entered. But this time, let's, uh, let's duplicate it. We use the same customer, Bed Bath & Beyond, one of my favorite stores, I say one of my wife's favorite stores. We'll go ahead and put in our uh, shipping date. And um, so now we've, uh, we've generated another sales order. And let's go ahead and bring that sales order up. This case here, we'll go back in. And, and again, it's real simple. We're going to do an import from Business One into the UPS World Ship. We'll put in our sales order number of 499, and um, that will then populate this for us automatically. We'll real quickly fill out the size of the box, height, width, length, and the weight. It'll calculate the freight for us. We make sure we've got a valid phone number. So we'll go ahead and take care of that and then put in the description of the goods. So again, more consumables. And now we'll go ahead and process the shipment. And we're going to say no, we, we don't uh, have a printer set up, so go ahead and skip the label part. We can reprint labels later. Anyways, we're done. But now this time, um, what we're going to do is, even though I have visibility of that shipping and tracking information, and I can get to it from the sales order, from the delivery, from the AR invoice, this time we're not going to import it. This way you'll see the, the difference here. So those are really you know two possible options. Quotes, orders, deliveries, you can print the FedEx, the USPS, the UPS labels. That data is brought back into Business One automatically. And then it's optionally whether you want to import that data back into the actual generating documents. And um, so now let's go ahead and let's copy this into a delivery. And so when we do that, we now have a delivery that doesn't actually specify the freight here because we're going to create a follow-up freight invoice. And you'll see how that works here in a minute. So we've, we've turned that one into a delivery. Um, let's go back and on the other sales orders we've entered here where we did calculate the freight. Let's go ahead and, and we'll copy those into uh, deliveries as well. When we do that, you can see when we do use the import feature, it'll then carry that forward. And now that it's a delivery, and we go ahead and add the delivery, then we can go the, uh, the next step here, and we can simply copy that into an AR invoice. But you may be in a situation where you have such a high volume of sales and shipments that uh, you don't want to import those shipping charges back in to SAP Business One. I don't uh, recall if I saved that or not. Let's try that again. Yep, I did. Okay. So um, 
those are a couple of ways to uh, uh, use the V33 ship solution. Now, um, on those those orders that we shipped, and we chose not to import the freight charges back into SAP Business One's actual generating document, that's where this batch invoice routine comes in into play. And so here I can say, take a, take a look at all of my deliveries, and then I can narrow it down. Um, I can narrow it down by any of those 64 user-defined BP properties, certain shipping types or carriers, uh, date ranges, and, and whatnot. Once I get the selection criteria the way I want it, then I can actually you know, save this and give it a name and then recall it later. The other cool thing about this is I can also create my own query. And so those of you who have used Business One for a while are familiar with the query generator. So you'll be able to also use your own queries to determine uh, what's susceptible for freight invoicing and, and what isn't. And so in this case here, let's go ahead and let's see what qualifies. And so now you can see a list of those documents, these uh, sales orders we did um, that we chose not to import the shipping charges. So we'll go ahead and check these boxes, and now we'll generate our freight invoices in mass. And so this is going through uh, all of the invoices listed here, and then it's done. It came back and it uh, created uh, all of our invoices. Now the reason it created four invoices for two different customers is because down here I had consolidation set to none. But I could consolidate this by business partner. And you really need to think about this. This is a, a pretty cool feature where I can ship, let's say I've got a, 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 a blanket order for Bed Bath & Beyond, and I'm shipping to them every day for a week, a multiple shipment a day for a week. I'm generating the UPS labels, calculating the freight costs, bringing that all back, uh, you know, all of that's coming back into business one, but I've just chosen not to bill them on each individual invoice. This will allow me to create a mass freight invoice at the end of the week or the end of the month and then handle that separately. So anyways, that's where the batch invoice comes in. Um, so at that point, you've seen the solution, you know, working from start to finish. What we'll do now is let's just take a step back and let's look at how easy it is to set up the, uh, the V33 ship extension. The first thing is, is in the add-on manager, it's a simple add-on. Um, you go through the add-on administration, you add it in, uh, and then you can set it up so it just starts automatically every time you start up business one. Once it's been added, then you have the ability to real quickly configure the add-on. Again, very simple. Um, what we do here is we configure the different carriers, what carriers can be used with this. Um, this is where we can apply handling fees, uh, and they could be per order, per package. They could be a flat amount, um, or they could be a, a percentage if we choose to do that, a percentage of shipping. We can apply the fees as an additional freight charge, a freight insurance, however you want to handle it. And then um, this checkbox here will enable real-time address validation. So you can see there's not a whole lot to set this up. It's a, a pretty simple solution that will eliminate double data entry. So that's all there is to really setting it up. Now in business partner form, let's go ahead and jump in here. Let's take a look at one of my customers here. Let's bring up uh, Walmart. And we'll look at Walmart in the good old USA. Um, on the address tab, you'll see that there's an um, option down here to, to validate that address. So here's an address. I can see that this address has not been validated. So if I click validate, it'll go out here and it'll then um, validate that address for me. Um, if I need to make any changes, I can. If there's an issue, it'll show up here. Uh, this all looks good. I'll use a selected address. And it's now, uh, you know, provides that address validation for me. So I can do this on all of the addresses in the business partner forms. Um, so the, typically the best business practice is when you get a new address from the from your customers, you next step is you you validate it. If I forget to validate it, then when I am in an, an order entry process, uh, when I'm putting in an order or a quote or something of that sort, uh, on the logistics tab, now this one's closed so I can't get to it, but you'll also see has this address been validated 
And if not, I can click the validate button and validate that address directly from the form. I can also put in a new address right on the fly and then validate that. So those are a couple of the nice features that this uh, extension brings to the table. If you have questions, please get in contact with Vision33 at www.vision33.com. Thank you for watching.